The film industry has its fair share of Renaissance artists, stars who have mastered multiple skills, whether that's writing, acting, or directing. Among the talented artists in the business, there's one particularly notable name who starred in a cult horror film and co-wrote one of the most harrowing and controversial crime films of the 90s. Zoe Lund died on April 16, 1999. She was only 37. But in this short lifespan, she left behind a body of work that still makes an impact. Let's take a look at the incredible life and career of Zoe Lund. Early Life Zoe Lund was born as Zoe Tamerlis on February 9, 1962, in New York City. Her father, Victor, was a writer and bookseller of Romanian descent. Her mother, Barbara, was a prominent sculptor of Swedish descent. This Balkan-Scandinavian mix of heritage has been cited as one of the reasons for Zoe's enchanting beauty. Her mother recalled that Zoe loved playing music as a child and was eager to master musical instruments as fast as possible. She often felt impatient that it took so long to learn an instrument. She would later compose music and even sang a few songs for the independent film Exquisite Corpses in 1989. She also had a supporting role in the film. She became interested in writing at a young age, and this talent took her far in her cinema career. Oddly enough, Zoe didn't initially consider becoming an actress. But it wasn't too long until she became a star among cult film fans. Before we tell you more about Zoe Lund's life and career, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First for more. Miss 45 In 1981, director Abel Ferrara released a new feature film called Miss 45. Ferrara had become popular among cult film fans for his slasher film The Driller Killer, released in 1979. This next film was a rape-revenge film that was inspired by similar films that had become popular in the 70s. It was heavily influenced by the Swedish film Thriller, A Cruel Picture, and the American films Death Wish and Taxi Driver. The film followed a young, mute seamstress who gets sexually assaulted twice in the same day. She fights back after the second assault and kills her rapist. The event traumatizes her, and she doesn't let anyone know about the murder. Upon murdering her second rapist, she decides to always keep a gun with her, a Colt 45. What follows is a thrilling story of a girl willing to go on a killing spree whenever she comes across a man who mistreats women. While Zoe didn't have any dialogue in the film, she managed to make an impact solely from her expressions. The film was written by Nicholas St. John, however, Zoe was very involved in the film's story as she appeared in the majority of the scenes. The film has become a cult hit, and it's what brought Zoe to wider attention. With this film, she also realized she could express her thoughts better through acting and writing. While Miss 45 might be the film she's best known for, she didn't rest on her laurels. Bad Lieutenant in 1992, Abel Ferrara's crime film Bad Lieutenant hit the screens and shocked audiences. The film, starring Harvey Keitel, followed a corrupt and drug-addicted police lieutenant tasked with investigating the horrific rape of a nun. The film was written by Abel Ferrara and Zoe, now known as Zoe Lund, following her marriage to Robert Lund. Zoe had a small role in the film, and there are scenes where she and Harvey Keitel take heroin together. The film shocked audiences with its graphic violence, strong language, and gritty depiction of rape, drug addiction, and general depravity. But if you look deeper, the film has strong religious undertones and deals with the subject of forgiveness. Zoe had very strong political and social views and often considered herself to be a political activist. She felt the cinema was the best medium to express her views. With Miss 45, she was able to depict a strong woman unwilling to allow herself to get pushed around any longer. With Bad Lieutenant, she was able to express her thoughts on forgiveness and redemption through the character played by Harvey Keitel. Much of the film's success should be credited to her writing. The film is considered one of the best American crime films of the 90s. Zoe's Other Works while Zoe is best known for Miss 45 and Bad Lieutenant, she continued to work regularly until her untimely death in 1999. Following her role in Miss 45, she appeared in the dual role of Andrea Wilcox and Elaine Bernstein in Larry Cohen's 1984 film Special Effects. In the film, she plays an aspiring actress who gets murdered by a sadistic director played by Eric Bogosian. Following the murder, the director, Neville, decides to make a film about it. He hires a doppelganger, also played by Zoe, for this film. This was another popular B-movie by Larry Cohen, who had experience working in grindhouse and exploitation films. This brought Zoe to even wider attention. In 1985, she appeared in an episode of the hit TV series Miami Vice called The Prodigal Son. This episode kicked off the second season of the series and co-starred Pam Greer. She had a small role playing Miranda. Her next foray into television was in a short-lived 1988 series called Hot House. 
The show dealt with the lives of the staff at a mental hospital. She played Chicky in seven episodes. In 1989, she had a supporting role in the comedy thriller Exquisite Corpses. She also composed and performed some of the songs for the film. She also starred in a short film called The House Guest, which was released in that same year. In 1993, she made a short film called Hot Ticket, which documented her visit to the Amsterdam Film Festival. Sadly, we never got to see Zoe direct longer films, but it was clear she had a keen interest in being a filmmaker as well. The short film Hot Ticket is available on YouTube. Her final roles were in the films Handgun, released in 1994, and Dreamland, released in 97. In Handgun, she played the supporting role of Zelda. The film dealt with an injured thief who attempts to hide a large sum of cash that he stole. Sadly, her scenes were taken out of the final cut, and her name doesn't appear in the credits. In Dreamland, she had a lead role as Caroline. Sadly, it's hard to find a copy of that final film. She was set to appear in a film called Bull, but the film was never completed. There were other projects that Zoe worked on that never came to fruition. She was fascinated with the model Gia Karanji and wrote a biographical screenplay about her life. While the screenplay was never produced, Zoe appeared posthumously in a documentary about the model's life called The Self-Destruction of Gia. Zoe also wrote the first draft of New Rose Hotel, which was directed by Abel Ferrara. She was set to collaborate with Ferrara on his film about the director Pier Paolo Pasolini. Sadly, this project was postponed and never completed during Zoe's life. Ferrara finally made the film in 2014 and has often talked about how he imagined Zoe acting as Pasolini. She appeared in the 1987 music video Heaven by Brian Adams. She also appeared in the documentary Heavy Petting, in which different entertainers discussed their first sexual experiences. Sadly for Zoe, her first sexual experience involved her being sexually assaulted. This harrowing incident happened before her role in Miss 45, which makes her performance deserving of even greater admiration. It certainly took courage to act in such a role after going through such a traumatic incident. A brief mention should be made about her political beliefs. She often participated in protests to fight for her causes. That included protesting against nuclear weapons. Her husband Robert has recalled in an interview that she tried to convince a group to destroy a nuclear reactor at Columbia University, though this never came to fruition. During her final years in Paris, she often hung out and assisted Algerian migrants living in the seedier parts of the city. While her career may have been short-lived and she didn't have a large body of work, there's a keen interest in her other writings. She wrote several poems, essays, short stories, and screenplays. She also wrote an unpublished novel trilogy entitled 490. Some of her writings are available to read on her website. Zoe's Legacy Zoe Lund passed away in Paris on April 16, 1999 due to cocaine-induced heart failure. Sadly, drug use was very much a part of her life, and she made no bones about it. She took heroin and often felt this aided her creativity. She even spent part of her life advocating for the legalization of it. Her husband, Robert Lund, has often given interviews where he discusses her life, career, and her views. He also manages her website, where fans can learn more about her life and even read her unpublished works. Filmmaker Paul Rackman has made short documentaries about Zoe's life. In 2021, Miss 45 celebrated its 40th anniversary, and we can expect to see a rekindled interest in Zoe's works. We can also expect a new generation of fans to discover her work for the first time. Zoe was a talented actress, writer, composer, and director who managed to express her thoughts through the medium of cinema. Like her character in Miss 45, she may not have had the opportunity to say much during her life, but her work was enough to make an unforgettable impact. Now it's time to hear from you. What are your favorite memories of Zoe Lund? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.